It's a post-election day Wednesday on KCMO Talk Radio 95.7 FM. You've got Mike Kehoe, the likely next governor in Missouri, winning his primary last night over Bill Eigel and uh, Jay Ashcroft. On the Kansas side, you've got Calvin Hayden, the incumbent sheriff in Johnson County, who lost fairly convincingly 56-44 to 44, to his former undersheriff, Doug Bedford. That's a big deal. Um, on the Kansas side of the state line, Prasanth Reddy winning that third district primary. We just talked to him. He's going up against Sharice Davids. Derek Schmidt, the former attorney general in Kansas, won the primary there in the second district to replace Jake Letourneau. He's now most likely headed to Washington, D.C. So a lot of things happening last night um, that we are continuing to monitor and talk about all morning long here on KCMO. Now, on the national level, Tim Walz. The now VP pick of Kamala Harris got the call yesterday, had his first appearance yesterday in Philadelphia, and already uh, they are trying to get this guy in with Taylor Swift. Rolling Stone writes an article here, headlined, Tim Walz is getting Swifties and the Beehive. Is that how they say it for Beyonce or is it the Bayhive? The Beehive, excited to vote. Kamala Harris's pick for VP has honored Beyonce, Prince, and Taylor Swift during his time as governor of Minnesota. It's so funny. Like, Tim Waltz is a 60-year-old, straight, white, heterosexual male. If there's a Republican next to his name or an R next to his name, Rolling Stone would call him a threat to democracy and just, you know, an uninformed old schmuck of a white guy. But because he's got a D next to his name, they turn him into, uh, you know, Abraham Lincoln 2.0 and Mr. Pop Culture. Tim Walls is 60 looking like he's going on 80. That's what a Democratic voter said to me yesterday who I work with. Like, this person's going to go vote for Tim Walls, and they're like, yeah, uh, what's up with that guy? Didn't know much about him, but they're like, it doesn't exactly look like he's 60. No, he doesn't. But suddenly, because he's Kamala Harris's VP pick, he's like the coolest guy ever. He's hip. He's with the times. He loves TikTok. He loves Taylor Swift. Like, what are we doing here? So transparent. What's going on? So Rolling Stone says here, Kamala Harris's brat summer has found the Swifty VP to match its freak. It's just so exhausting. Tim Walls is your run-of-the-mill, probably corny, boomer white dude. But because he's Kamala Harris's VP pick, he's as cool as the other side of the pillow. It's amazing how that works, isn't it? Meantime, J.D. Vance is like a weirdo freak who nobody likes and rips on cat ladies. Meantime, J.D. Vance is 39, mixed-race family, Three kids, basically as normal as they come. But he's called a couch-loving, cat-lady-ripping weirdo. But t- t- Tim Walls, oh, man, this guy's cool. He's all, they are amazing at making corny guys look cool. Tim Kaine, back in 2016, was the ultimate cornball with Hillary Clinton. They tried to make him look cool. They tried to make Chuck Schumer look cool even though the guy can't even grill a damn burger. Elizabeth Warren, hey, let's have a beer in my uh, you know, kitchen during COVID. Oh, cheers. Bottoms up, man. They try to make her look cool. None of these people are cool. I'm not saying Republicans are really cool. I'm saying like they're all pretty corny, but it's amazing how Rolling Stone writes about, you know, a guy like Tim Walz. Meantime, whether you love Trump or hate Trump, like there's some coolness to Donald Trump. There is. I mean, even if you hate him, you've got to admit it. There's a pop culture coolness to Donald Trump. But, of course, they would never mention that. So now, all right, what do they write here? On Tuesday, after Harris announced Tim Walls as her choice for VP, this is in Rolling Stone, Music Stands did a deep dive on the Minnesota governor and found out that Walls has not only honored Prince, Taylor Swift, Beyonce, and Bruce Springsteen, but he also helped protect ticket buyers from uh, big fees. Walsh earned the nickname of Swifty VP after Swifties found out he signed House File 1989, named after Swift's album and birth year, 
to ban hidden fees and call for transparency around pricing when buying tickets online. One Taylor Swift fan posted, Kamala's VP pick being a Swifty might just have a bigger impact on this election than you think, and in the best way. (sighs) It's so exhausting. It is so exhausting. I mean, they are trying to now dig Taylor Swift back into this election, get her involved in this election by talking about how Tim Walls is somehow some kind of a Swifty. He's a 60-year-old dude. They ain't Swifties. Okay, John? You know, there, there's a word, don't the kids say creeper? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, John, this guy right. is you. Tim Walls is you. I mean, this guy grew up with you. In a sense. Oh, I understand what you're saying. It reminds me of Mr. Mom where Michael <laughs> Keaton's rewiring the house. Guy says, what are you doing, 220? Uh, yeah, 220, 221, whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know? man, it's just, it's, that's exactly what this is, man. That's exactly what this is. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. They are trying so hard to drag Taylor Swift into this election. And I still don't think it's going to work. I know that they've got the media, they've got pop culture, they've got a bunch of celebrities all lined up now, crowning Kamala and trying to turn her into the female Barack Obama, even though she's not even close to what Obama was and is as a politician. But I I just don't see it happening. I don't. I mean, Taylor hasn't said anything in the last two and a half weeks since Kamala's been anointed the chosen one. And you would think there would be just a kernel of something from Taylor Swift if she had any interest in getting involved. It doesn't mean they're not going to continue to try. They will continue to try, whether it's puff pieces in Rolling Stone about this guy, Tim Walls, or anything else. But by the way, I saw yesterday Taylor Swift is going to be coming to Kansas City um, to spend an extended period of time here. This was in the Kansas City Star. Taylor Swift reportedly planning an extended stay in Kansas City. So with that coming as well, you're telling me Taylor Swift is going to spend weeks, if not months, in Kansas City. And while she's here, suddenly jump into the political arena during one of the most divisive times in modern American history. Come on. Use some common sense. That's not going to happen. But it is here. She's coming here to listen to KCMO talk radio. She's just loving the new signal on 95.7. She can't get enough. She's streaming overseas, and now she wants to be here, you know, pull up the old KCMO Talk Radio app and listen to us every single morning. So we're looking forward to getting her into the studios here at KCMO. I mean, she's going to be right down the street from us in Corporate Woods at Travis's New Digs there in uh, Leewood, so it should be an easy commute for her. So I'm just, I'm looking forward to that as much as anything else. But Taylor Swift is not going to endorse Kamala Harris, as she spends weeks in Kansas City, it's not going to happen. But if she does, she can do it on our radio station. That is true. She is welcome to come in studio. We can do a full hour with Taylor Swift, and we'll just sit here and chop it up. That would be a doozy, wouldn't it? Come on now. You know, we usually take the photos with the people that come in the studio right in front of the banner behind me, at least when it's a special guest. And uh, how funny would that be? I'll wear my Harrison Butker jersey that day, too. (laughs) <laughs> she just passes all the music stations and walks right to us. <laughs> okay, I have to tell you something, by the way, real quick, that I haven't even told Kate about yet. So her and I are going to the opener against the Ravens. We're going. It's going to be one of our first nights out where we're trusting a babysitter with three kids. We're looking forward to it. So we're going to go to the game. Just like, you know, regular seats, regular people. I got invited yesterday by somebody in St. Louis to be in a suite for that game, for the opener against the Ravens. And it's a suite that's right next to Travis Kelsey's suite where Taylor Swift's going to be. And, you know, he calls me up and he says, do you want to go? I've got a ticket for you. And I said, no. And the reason I said no is I said, my wife and I are already going. What am I going to do? You got one ticket for me? I'm going to tell her to stay home? I mean, we, 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 like, we're, you know, we don't get out much. All right. We got three little kids. We're going to go out to a game and, you know, have a good time and hang out together and, you know, watch some football. But I, you, you got one. I'm not. I said no. And he's like, oh, come on, man. You don't want to be. I'm like, well, yeah, I would. But you got one. 
I'd rather hang out with my wife and just, you know, spend the night together and watch some football than what am I going to do? Tell her to stay home and go to a suite? Like, come on. And, of course, the guy giving me gruff is divorced, and, you know, that's why. I like my marriage. Sorry. But it was a nice offer, but I'm just, I'm just, you know, what? So I can stand there and point to the window and say, oh, wow, look at that. It's Taylor Swift. Okay. I mean, cool, I guess. But, yeah, she can come on the show anytime. She can bring the whole entourage in here. We've got six microphones in the studio. We'll have a blast. Now, that would be something. 